Good morning, afternoon, or night, podcast listeners. We are back <laughs> here with Not Your Therapist podcast. I am Kelly. And I'm Brittany. I'm very excited for today's episode. I mean, I'm always excited, but this one is especially exciting because I feel like we're digging into a area that is unbeknownst to us for many years. Oh, yeah. It's so foreign. We are going to give you some unsolicited dating advice today. Yay! (laughs) And what I mean by that is we have no idea how to date. Like, literally no idea. Everything blows my mind how it all works now with all the, like, (laughs) dating apps and meeting people. I'm like, aren't you scared? But we'll get into that. (laughs) We'll get into that, like, later in the episode. (laughs) Literally the same. And I think that's what's going to make today's episode just kind of humorous. I think there is going to be some true advice in there, but more so just us trying to navigate a world that we just are clueless about. Buckle your seatbelts and forgive us for sounding like dummies. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> well, how long, how many years ago was the last time that you were actually like dating? Um, Over six years ago now. Okay. For me, my dating with air quotes was um, <laughs> in high school going like to lunch with guys. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Was that like a date that was like, hey, Mm. Brittany, do you want to go for lunch with me? Or you guys just went for lunch together? We kind of just went for lunch. It was very casual. And like, I I don't, that's why I did air quotes around dating because it Mm -hmm. wasn't really dating. Like sometimes it was just like we were friends and we would just go for lunch. Sometimes it was like, I can tell he likes me and like, maybe I kind of like him too. And I'll just go to lunch and then maybe we'll like go to lunch again (laughs) and see (laughs) where it goes. But like, were you the type of gal that would be like, I think Jesse likes me. Can you go ask him? I don't really remember. I think kind of. But it was also like the friends would be the ones to be like, I'm going to find out if he likes you. I'm going to go talk to him. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like, I guess you can like see. Report back, does. please. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't like, care, but also tell me everything. Exactly. And then it was also that I wasn't sure if I wanted to know. And like I was scared or I was like in embarrassed so I I was like make sure they don't know that you're asking like for me (laughs) right I feel like we're totally opposite in that way oh really oh my god I am like I need to know everything I need to know what you said how you said it what time you said it what was your tone like did you tell anyone else give me a full journal entry about what happened that is so funny (laughs) preferably audio is best like uh get it recorded <laughs> i am the worst I'm such and i'm just oh, that way so like funny. i'm such a snoop i yeah. like to know like i, I would just... do the same thing for other people but like for when it came to me i'm like oh my god i don't know like i'd be so nervous about trying to find out if a guy liked me or them knowing that i liked them because then i was nervous that they didn't like me back like there was a lot of uncertainty there and even when i started dating jesse in high school There was so much confusion. There wasn't a whole lot of times where the guy would say, I like you. It was just, hey, let's hang out. And I'm like, as a friend, I don't, I don't get it. Like, (laughs) are we, are we friends? I don't know. Do you like me? I was so clueless. And like, if that says anything about how this episode is going to go for me, (laughs) then it's going to be like. I am an actual dummy when it comes to how the dating world has evolved since high school. I mean, I can say that I will try and help. I mean, not that you need help. No, I don't. (laughs) I hope not. (laughs) But uh, yeah, this is going to be funny. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to hear what you have to say for all of this, too. Like, Uh, it's going to be good. So when I was first dating, I guess, outside of my like last relationship, it's when Tinder first started I remember I would like go home and I would put it on like my iPad not my phone because I didn't want to like do it during the day or like at work or whatever so I would like go home and be like "Ooh, what do I have what new aspects have been added to the dating pool (laughs) and I would be like swiping and be like oh my god this man he is like 10 out of 10 swipe on that yes please and then the next day I'd come home and we would match and he'd be like hey what's up and I'd be like ha nope 
<laughs> really? Yeah. And I'd relook at his profile and be like, mm, he's okay. I'm probably like, nah, forget it. That's so funny. I had like maybe two conversations total with anybody on Tinder. Was it just because like as soon as it happened that there was like an interest there, you were like, actually, I'm going to rethink this? I don't know. I, I Like you found them uninteresting after? <laughs> Maybe you like the mystery. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like I was secretly just, like, not wanting a relationship, and I was like that with Spencer, too. Okay. Like, when we were first dating, I was like, no, <laughs> not interested, sorry. <laughs> and, like, he put so much effort in, and yeah. I even came all the way back to BC after I moved back to Ontario to visit him, and he asked me to be his girlfriend, and I was like, no, sorry, I'm just not looking for a wife right now. Like, am I psycho? <laughs> He's probably like, girl, you just flew across the country to see me. I was so stupid. Oh, uh, no. I I redeemed myself. Like, I after that happened, I felt really bad. And I was like, I just felt like I didn't want to be in a relationship. And it, the, this relationship with Spencer is one of those ones that just, like, hit you in the face. Like, okay. And I couldn't, obviously let him go and I couldn't keep stringing him along forever so I had to like make a decision so I ended up taking him on a date and I ended up asking him (gasps) to be my boyfriend oh my gosh so unconventional and untraditional I I love it poor guy did ask me but I was just an (laughs) asshole and said no (laughs) technically he asked first but you were like I gotta like show him in my way that I'm serious about this now that's like I mean it and I'm going to ask exactly. you because I'm an independent, strong woman. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the total opposite with Jesse. This was like probably around grade like nine or ten before Holy we cow. even actually started dating. Mm-hmm. And he was like, do you want to go to like play dome with me? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. And then I brought like five friends and oh he God. went by Classic himself. Brittany. Yeah, literally. I was just so. Uh, and I did like him a lot, but I was just nervous. So I was like. I don't know if he meant like by himself or like by myself or what it was. So I brought a bunch of friends and he is terrified of heights still. And he went on the the Ferris wheel, which is something that like I don't even think he would ever do again. But one of my friends that I was with, she's like, you have to ride with me. And she was so like, you're you're going on with me or else like I'm not. I'm not going to do this. Like, you have to do it. And she, like, grabbed onto my arm. So he got stuck with one of my other friends. And he was terrified. I kept looking back at him. And he was just, like, holding onto the bar, looking, like, closing his eyes. And I was like, I am so sorry for this. Because I knew that he wanted to do it with me. And I did, Aww. too. But then my other friend was like, no. Like, it has to- so high school for this to happen. But that summarizes how I was, too, with, like, understanding what guys were thinking. I had no idea. Also, though, friends are just dicks. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially in high school. Like, yeah. Oh, I think that's really funny. There's a lot of interfering uh-huh. by friends, even if they weren't intending to do that. But some would call that a cock block. It, it was a yeah, it was a bit of a cock block. So sorry, <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> I tried to log back into Tinder to see if I could see my profile. Couldn't. But. I kind of wanted to, like, talk about what you think your profile would look like if you were on a dating app today. Oh, man. First of all, my pictures would probably be the pictures that I've taken for YouTube-related content. Yeah. (laughs) Put your best face forward. Exactly. So I'm assuming probably what I would put on there, I'd probably put pictures of me and Luna. And then I don't know what I'm the worst with like bios. It took me so long to figure out what to write in my like Twitter bio. And that's (laughs) Twitter. (laughs) I think I would majorly struggle with like, I don't even know what people put in their, in their, in their like Tinder profiles or. Oh, I have examples. Don't worry. Oh, cool. Can't wait. (laughs) See, like, I feel like I truthfully and honestly do not remember anything that was in my I remember one picture and it was like with a couple of my friends and I thought I looked super cute so I was like yep adding that Uh. (laughs) but I feel like in my bio I would totally lie would you what would Uh, you say I'd be like I'm a world traveler like (laughs) please sponsor me (laughs) or like just try and make myself like more desirable I don't know yeah 
like the whole I'm more interesting online type thing. Just uh, put totally. out like the most exaggerated version of yourself. Mm-hmm. And then be like, well, I guess you'll find out the real me. It's kind of true. I don't if know. If you swipe. <laughs> swipe. What is it? Swipe right? If you like so, them. I, oh. <laughs> I just, say so I just say swipe because I don't know which way. <laughs> I feel like it's swipe right if okay. you like them. Please oh, okay. correct us if we're wrong. I have like times where we're in like a big group of people or we're on a trip with people. I've taken the uh, responsibility of swiping for my friends. Oh, yes. I enjoy That's that. That's actually much. so much fun. I just don't know how I would like to portray myself, I guess. I feel like I would either be very vague and just like point from be like pizza, coffee, craft beer, Kardashians. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that's how I am on my Twitter bio. <laughs> yeah. And then just be like, PM me for details. <laughs> for inquiries, contact. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or I would be super super descriptive be like hi i am kelly i was born on march 29th on a brisk like spring day at 12 54 p.m and i'm scared of the dark <laughs> yeah you're being honest straight to the point it seems like people are just trying to i guess rightfully so just catch the attention and be yeah. odd in whatever way they want and like funny i think so too uh, there's like a lot of competition, I guess you would say, on dating profiles. You need to, yeah, you need to stand out and do something that's like most people like funny people. If they have a funny caption, then it's probably going to be like, oh, this, this person's, you know, cool, casual, lighthearted. I feel like I would get sucked in. I don't think that I would enjoy it as much as I think I would if that's the way that it is. It's like a social media platform, obviously, and like the competition is so real and you might be the most genuine person but they're swiping on people that say i want sex yeah exactly you know it's just like it's hard to compete it is and i feel like two of like our friends now have been in long-term relationships from people that they found on a dating profile like tinder whereas we have a lot of other friends that just use it for hookups and i guess that's that's where it gets probably really confusing because you're like what's the real reason why this person is on here do they want an actual relationship but then I guess that's where actually talking to them comes in and like starting a conversation but and I just kind of thought and went back to what I said the first thing how I was like oh I would probably lie and I meant that in a way so that I would get their attention and so that could happen a lot too is where you're like okay you've clicked on me so obviously visually you might like me so let's like flip the switch and try and like get to know me better. But I don't know. I feel like it, the dynamic is like so hard. I was introduced to Spencer from somebody, which I think was a very like authentic and there's no pressure or anything. Yeah, I've had a lot of people that I'm with. If I'm out with friends or something, they're like, oh, I totally matched with that girl or that guy yeah. on Tinder. And I'm like, how do you how do you remember this? <laughs> like, did you talk to them? Or, and they're like, no, I just like matched with him. And I'm like, you literally remember his face from a picture that you probably also saw like a hundred other people on the dating app that same day. It's crazy. Especially the people that ma just like swipe and match with tons of people. It's just yeah. crazy. I don't know how you, how they keep up but yeah when you match a question would be would you meet someone privately or like when is it appropriate to do that I don't think I'd ever meet someone privately I feel the same way but yeah how the hell would you start a relationship then yeah it's bizarre like what if they're a murderer exactly <laughs> and I literally don't take Tucker for a walk past dark because I freak out when someone passes me. Like, how the hell? I don't understand. Like, I don't millions of people are on these dating apps and just go meet people whenever they want. And I'm like, um, what the heck? I think it's probably partly because we are into true crime. <laughs> <laughs> and so many of the stories <laughs> turn out. <laughs> Kelly almost spit out her smoothie. <laughs> I thought it was going to come out your nose. Oh, dear. Oopsie. 
there's so many stories that you hear about on like true crime TV shows or podcasts where you're like, this person went out on a date and then they never came home. And it's like, well, yeah, because they're probably all murderers. That's just like what I, what that's where my mind goes is that they're either going to like be horrible people or horrible people that also murder. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't trust, I just don't think I trust, like, random people. I have no idea, like, not that, like, our friends don't have, like, a perfectly valid reason for being in relationships with the person they met on a dating app, but, like, for me personally, I'd be like, oh, I want to know someone that somebody else already knows. They maybe, yeah. like, grew up with them, and you're like, I can tell you this person is not a psychopath. <laughs> they give you a nice review. Exactly. <laughs> Verified cool person exactly and i feel like if probably both of us were in the dating world we would look for something like that but i don't know how often that happens well, i was just gonna say i would love to know the statistic on how many people use dating apps to find their significant other whether it turns out to be like a long-term like marriage type relationship how many people are really going to the bar and like meeting people or going on a walk and meeting people you know that seems more foreign now I feel like people at first when the online dating started coming out they're like they're like oh where'd you marry you're like we met online yeah sorry, what <laughs> we went online dating out. sorry yeah. what <laughs> and now it's like oh we met in a park and you're like what do you mean you met in a park yeah like how, how did you that happen? what did you say how did yeah. you walk up to that the switch has flipped incredibly oh yeah it's the new norm is meeting people online even friendships so many of my friendships started so online true. which i guess you know what maybe that's a good way to think about it there is go. because so many of my good friends are now friends that i had met through youtube through instagram i had no idea who they were i went right. and they i could have been murderers also exactly oh no i'm stupid i should have like <laughs> Maybe I should have been more careful. No, I'm kidding. All of, all of my friends are great. They're not psychopaths. They're not murderers. I always think of this like the time that Michaela and I, we went to go visit our friend Jackie, who neither of us had actually met in person ever. And we stayed at her house with her whole family. It was so weird to think that like, obviously all of us felt very comfortable. It is a little bit different, I guess, when you've been watching this person on YouTube for a long time. Yeah, you've been that's... talking to them for a long time. And you went with your friend. Which is a is better too, and stayed with her family. Although that just means more people to murder you. If <laughs> is this safe? What we're doing? Like, is this okay to be doing this? It worked out great, but I can't imagine doing something like that for a guy that like lives on his own. It's terrifying. And that's the thing is, I think eventually, obviously, we become more comfortable. Like, I'm sure that when you first started YouTube, you were like, I could never go on a plane to meet somebody. And like, as you get more accustomed to it or you start to talk to people, you realize like, OK, this person seems legit. I would hope that you start to get cues that make you feel comfortable enough. Yeah, I think to do so. that eventually. Mm -hmm. And it's just probably so foreign to us that we're like, um, no thanks. Yeah. You're like, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Well, that brings up the question then is in a lot of these dating apps, you can set like a filter or whatever on your area and like how far you want to like expand that to match with people. All of Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the world, please. <laughs> but seriously, I don't know how I would do that, especially with experience with long distance. I hated it. Not my jam. Maybe other people, if you're like a busy person or you travel a lot, it might be more realistic to expand more. Or you could be the opposite and be like, get me the hell out of this town. I want people only 50 kilometers away so that I know for sure I don't know them or that my best friend has not slept with them yet. So true. Like where we live, we live in a very, I, it's not like incredibly small, but we live in a small city and even like the outer surrounding cities we know people that live there we know people that know people and the degrees of separation are very small yes that's a really good question because like if jesse and i never met say i still know so many people that are in this area that i'd be like i don't know if i want to like <laughs> date in this area but also i don't think i'd want to go very far either well exactly you kind of have to find that torn. balance exactly yeah. I see a lot of people that I went to high school with. So I'm from an even smaller town than this, but there are, are a lot of similarities where there's like one high school. So most people 
went to that high school. And I see a lot of people that we all went to high school with and they don't start dating until after high school. Oh, interesting. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, obviously, and we talked about this in an uh, other episode that I find it very admirable that you and Jesse have like started dating so young and like grew into adults together. If you knew somebody in high school, maybe not awesome way to judge them as an adult I guess yeah true like if you don't know if they're not in your direct circle of friends exactly people change over the years they evolve like it makes sense now that you're saying all of that that some people would know each other and then start dating well after high school because you're all different people like I mean you're obviously the same kind of like character but like you mature and yeah I could see I could see that happening for sure it's almost like Maybe it's not your first contact you or whatever. Look there. <laughs> I, yeah, I wouldn't go looking there. It's not my first choice. But yeah. also, if you match with somebody and then you're like talking, I could see myself thinking like, oh, okay, wow, they're a lot different than they were in high school. Or oh, I should maybe give them a chance. It seems like they're pretty cool people. Yeah, that would be like the old school traditional way of meeting people, most likely. Unless, well, I guess a lot of people, most of the time, I guess if you're on a dating app and you see somebody that you went to high school with, you probably are not going to, like, be interested in talking to them. They could be so different. They could have matured so much, and they would be great for this person. But, like, I highly doubt any of my friends would have, like, purposely matched with somebody that they went to high school with. Or you see somebody that you had a super crush on in high school. Ah. And then you... Mm-hmm. You're like, this could finally be my chance yeah. to live out my 16 year old dream. <laughs> wow, what a life. <laughs> yeah. I, but, and it's kind of nice because then you have that connection and that like verified check mark. True. You're like, I know this person not well, but I know yeah. who they are. Probably not a murderer. Let's do this. Okay, so Brittany, I have a game that we're going to play. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. And I'm calling it rapid fire questions with a bit of an explanation. Can we get some game music? All right. These are situations in which might happen whilst dating. Okay. First question. Sex on a first date. One, two, three. No. Yes. <laughs> I knew you were going to say yes. <laughs> the My reasoning for this is I would have a hard time with self-control. Okay. <laughs> First off, if I was obviously like sexually attracted to somebody, but I do have to say that if this went on for an extended period of time and I found myself getting into situations where I was like, sure, 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 then I might shut it off. You know, I don't know. Yeah, that's my stance. Maybe not the first date, but I wouldn't be like, I'm waiting three months to have sex with you. Yeah, exactly. Like, but also is this with people that you don't know already like because this this, my reasoning is going back to the are they a murderer also do they have an std that i'm unaware of and (laughs) there's so many factors that go into my answer (laughs) (laughs) well i have had a one night stand before Uh uh-huh it was really fun (laughs) oh i'm sure it was like i I don't doubt that but i did kind of know this person sort of so my loose answer to that question is yes with stipulations yeah of sorts yours is just a hard no (laughs) i I don't know are you a murderer psychopath are you gonna kidnap me do you have an std like what kind of shit are you into yeah exactly like jesse and i've talked about this before and he's like i don't know how some people do it like my friends they'll just like have one night stand all the time or they just immediately are like yeah let's do it and he goes what if they have like aids <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> just like well it's true that is a very scary situation i would hope is, that people yeah. are obviously protecting themselves some aren't obviously but i also think that i would be afraid of what they were into sexually okay yeah like what happens if they're like so nice and then they like get into the bedroom and you're like He's, oh, he's like, fuck? put on this leash and. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Second one. I, I feel like I kind of have to explain it, but let's just see how we both take it first. Sending nudes. One, two, three. Sure. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't really sure if we were going to take it as like sending nudes just in a relationship in general or like 
sending nudes on a dating app, but I'm going to say sending nudes through people that you've met on a dating app that you don't know super well. I say sure because I really don't care what people do. (laughs) I would say, though, don't do it if they're not welcomed. (laughs) Like oh, if you get it. the vibe that like just don't don't start off by sending nudes. Just don't do it. No dick like, pics. Okay. No dick pics. I don't think a single friend has been like, oh my God, I got this great picture and I'm so happy that they sent it. Like, no, it doesn't work like that. Like send a picture of your butt, your abs, your arms, <laughs> yeah. your lips. <laughs> yeah, you know, those are all probably way more welcomed. But if you're in a like a nice spot go for it i don't care but what about if you were sending them yeah sure if i'm like comfortable yeah yeah if if it totally would depend on like i guess the person one of the things that i that i remember and still hear about people talk about is like the question of how much or when do you text so Mm. this was like a rapid fire question with explanation because i think it's like a big one and at first when i thought of this question i kind of was like thinking of this big long oh well if you are into them then you should you know a b and c but I honestly think the short answer or my short answer to this question is just like when you feel it is right just freaking do it there's nothing worse than being in a relationship with someone who like never text you or something and you would have known that from the beginning how do you just text them when you wanted to and be like why isn't this person texting me back they suck at texting that's going to be part of your relationship and if someone's freaked out because you text them after a day instead of it would four be days so as per, you know yeah I kind of have a funny story because when I first met Spencer met him on the beach we chatted and then he was going to take me for a drive so I gave him my number I I guess he gave me his too and I didn't want to wait to talk to him but I didn't want to like sound like too eager yes yeah so I texted him like hey he he it's Kelly (laughs) he was like yeah I know you gave me your number already and I was like oh duh (laughs) silly me (laughs) and then like that sparked a conversation Uh, like an ongoing conversation and I was like oh thank god I did this like yeah wow but I'm like how stupid that I was why couldn't I have just been like hey Spencer it's Kelly excited for tomorrow yeah or excited for my like whatever day that we were gonna go yeah but I hear I thought I was like Ooh, I have to be you, careful. You like played it very safe for the first part because you're like, I don't know how he's going to like react to this text message. Is it too soon? Is he going to think I'm like crazy? Probably still thought I was crazy, but. Oh, and you know what? That's okay. Trapped I you like, now. I like some crazy. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse now, actually, he probably has done this for a long time. We're like, if I don't reply within like 20 minutes, he's like, Brittany, why don't you love me? <laughs> he's like, you didn't reply to my text message. What? what? Kind of like your whole thing, like, uh, they hate me or they're dead. It's literally going to show up in every episode. But (laughs) I think it's so funny because it's like, I truly do not care if somebody continuously texts me. Like, I love talking no matter what. And if I don't reply, I'm literally just, like, too busy to literally get to my phone, whatever it is. Maybe I'm working downstairs. Maybe I'm at, like, an event or something like that. But if somebody is like, I got... I really want to talk to you right now and I'm bored and you're not responding. I'd be like, oh, sorry, what's up? And they're like, I talk to them because I'm not going to be like, oh my God, they're crazy. Like, ew, why do they want to talk to me? If they were going to get genuinely annoyed, then they're probably not the person to be in your life because that's just who you are. You like to be funny. You like to do things like that. It's not, it's not like a problem. You're not hurting anyone. Yeah. And I just agree with that. Like if somebody, if you go to text somebody after a first date, let's say the night that they leave to say like, had a great time, can't wait for another date, and they're like, mm, too much. Yeah. Probably not the one for you. Yeah, like I don't – it's like a, a nice little follow-up. I would see it as that. I'd be I'd be happy to get a text from somebody. Like if I went out with someone and they were like, oh, I had great great time tonight. Like let's do this again. I'd be like, oh, that's so sweet of them. I'd be really weirded out if I didn't hear anything I back. agree. Yeah. I think there's a sense of like acting coy and like playing hard to get that has been yeah. blown out of proportion to an extreme. Yeah. It's like, I ooh, I don't want to sa- I don't want to s- 
like seem too available and it's like dude you just opened your legs and let them have sex with you <laughs> so you can't be any more available like exactly. go ahead and send the text <laughs> there's like physically and emotionally available that are like somehow turned into like two completely polar opposites which oh yeah i think is like the most bizarre thing it's all very strange to me this dating world of adults it's like a job i feel like it's a job (laughs) yeah your your second job coming home for so many people is looking through a dating app trying to find your person i can see it getting very obsessive but also i wonder because does it make you more inclined to want to date more people because you see it's all right in front of you and it's so easy to start up a conversation with someone I guess that you would match with that like if you start seeing one person do you constantly think oh this all of these other people are still out there that I'm interested in or could be interested in could be interested in like that would be very strange to me and especially like There's so many people, like, so many of our friends will talk to multiple people at the same time. Yeah. And then it's, like, in the back of their heads, probably, like, oh, well, if this doesn't work out, then I got this, the other girls that I've been talking to. But then does it interfere with you building, like, a genuine connection, like, a strong connection with the person that you're with at that moment? That's an amazing question because when is the appropriate time when you meet somebody and start to talk to somebody to turn off your dating apps for that exact reason like you talking to this person or multiple people when have you developed a strong enough connection with somebody to drop the other people for example or turn off the app is having multiple relationships or the opportunity to get multiple relationships impeding on you finding one single good relationship yeah and I I think it I think it does especially with the people who have a hard time committing to one person when you have all of that right in front of you it's like being on a diet and then being placed like having donuts and cake and like everything else placed in front of you and they're like but you can't eat it because like you've committed to your diet and for the people who have a hard time with commitment issues that would be so difficult to have all of these other people potential dates that are like so easily accessible to be committed to one person it's so strange before we go into our very very specialized dating advice that you should totally totally follow because we're professionals (laughs) literally just kidding (laughs) i wanted to anonymously look at a couple um dating profiles some of them are insane (laughs) Like, oh God, one of the captions was, I can't touch my face if you're sitting on it. (laughs) First of all, dear God, brilliant. (laughs) Second of all, ew. Yeah. People are cocky as hell. Oh, online. Yes. Yeah. But at the same time, I read that and I laughed. Yeah. Was that a girl that uh, I'm not sure or a guy that one? I'm not sure. But as I was like looking through these, I was like, oh, this made me laugh. And like, I hope they're not serious about that. Yeah. Like there's a lot of (laughs) um, like quarantine jokes. Obviously, that's one of them. I hope that I wouldn't fall into that. Like, oh, that's really funny. Yeah. Trap, I guess. I don't know. How do you judge somebody just based on, like, a few words and a couple right. pictures? Yeah. I don't know. Like, some of the other ones, trying to see some quarantine titties. <laughs> okay. How about watch some porn? I don't know. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, this is why I think I would just, like, no, I can't do, yeah, can't do I'd the dating like, apps. Like, oh, God, no. Like, this guy yeah. was like, I'm kind of scared of girls. My GPA is a C+. <laughs> Palm Bay's no chase. (laughs) (laughs) And like, I'm like, okay, you're funny, but yeah, no, thanks. (laughs) So this guy, I'm young, I'm wild and I'm free looking for a good time. Not a long time. Like it's pretty honest. You know what you're getting with that guy. 
And this guy, see, okay, this one I saw and I was like, hmm, I like this. His pros have a cholesterol free heart, not balding, gainfully employed. There's a 50% chance our kids will have dimples, love long walks down the aisle. Oh, shoot. Can spell into fitness, fitting this whole pizza in my mouth. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Cons. Will totally wreck your diet. Will not deal with insects for you. Love dad jokes. Wait, maybe this is a pro. Okay. And I was like, I like you. Yeah. This is That cu- sounds cute. Somewhat honest. Watch that. That's the one that's going to be the murderer, though. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this one guy. My friend has a boat with, like, a sweating emoji. Like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Like, so who's your friend then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't go as he planned. <laughs> no. He probably gets, like, messages like that all the time. Oh, my God. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> to show you, Brittany. Yeah. I try. All right. Well, do we have some dating advice? I feel like I have one that's just very, like, like a good number one is don't be stupid. Don't be like the people that you see on true crime podcasts and TV shows. I just, I feel like I'm a mom when I say this, but like don't meet people privately for the first time that you have no idea who they are. Just don't do it. That's my first one just to stay safe. Probably. Yeah, stay safe in, in, yeah. All, in all ways. So going along with that, mine is just like trust your gut. Send a picture of the person to your best friend and say if you don't hear from me in two hours call the police (laughs) yeah exactly and like check in because I would want everybody to be safe and I do think about my friends like my girlfriends that are on dating apps that are going on dates all the time I almost feel like I always want to know and not because I'm like trying to be like helicopter but just I just want to make sure that you're safe. I mean, obviously, they're very capable of doing that themselves. And it could happen also, like, if they go to a bar and meet somebody and then they go home. Oh, exactly. Like, it's the same mm-hmm. thing. I get it. But I don't know. I just have this weird. And maybe it's just because we haven't experienced that world totally. As far as, like, actual advice goes, be yourself. <laughs> don't try to, like, change yourself for other people. So, like, don't take my advice and lie. Yeah. Don't hmm. do what Kelly said. <laughs> If you're, like, not vibing with the person, don't force it. Like, everything should be kind of easy in the beginning. If you find yourself being either annoyed by the person or just, like, yeah, just not vibing with them. There's so many other people out there, like we discussed on the dating apps. I'm sure there's so many people on the apps that are probably better for you and in person if you're going out and meeting people in person. Yeah, you don't need to force it. Just... Go with the flow, and if the flow's not working for you, then get out. Yeah, don't fake it. Like, the first part of a relationship is, like, the best. I feel like your hormones are just, like, flying wild, and you're just, like, enjoying so much about a person that if it's, like, super complicated at the beginning, obviously don't write someone off, like, immediately because they, like, bite their nails or something. But at the same time, like, just be mindful. Like, uh, and don't, don't have your expectations set too high, I think. And, like, if you want to do something, do it. And that's kind of what I was talking about. Like, if you want to text them, do it. Personally, I'm a big communicator. I express my feelings very well. Some people might think of that in a negative way. I think even Spencer thinks that in a negative way sometimes. Like, he's like, can you just shut it off for about five seconds? That's just what I, how I am. And if someone was, like, completely opposite of that, I'd probably be like, that would be really hard. Yeah, I think so, too. It, and that's with the whole vibing. Like, do you play off of each other really well? It's probably a good sign. Also being, if you want to do something, do it. Only do, I think, like what you're comfortable with. But don't necessarily shy away from trying new things, you know, with somebody like supporting what they like to do. I think that's really important. However, at the same time, dear baby sweet Jesus, Never give up on your own dreams. Yes. <laughs> because that sucks really bad. Yeah. Like just because you're supporting the other person's interests doesn't mean you have to like completely abandon what you want to do. And there's a difference between like supporting someone and changing what you like because of them. I just remember literally saying out loud to somebody, I literally said, like, I moved here, I'm supporting him, and just like, 
his dreams have become my dreams. And I'm like, God, uh, (laughs) it sounds so sad. I can't believe I let myself do that. I totally lost so many pieces of myself when I confused supporting someone with changing myself. Yeah, there's a big difference. I allowed myself to not feel so many things and ignore so many things in order to try and be happy for somebody else, which was uh uh-uh. It's easy to support people, but it's also easy to lose yourself if you get too involved in it and giving up on the things that you want to do. I think bottom line for me is that dating can be and is super fun. I definitely see the joy in it because of, like I said, the first, you know, whatever period of time when dating feels so good and you're like, woo, like meeting someone new, although that can be nerve wracking, the getting to know someone part can be super thrilling and like feel really good. So I get it's like exciting. Yeah, I get I get the draw to that. Yeah being safe, trusting yourself, trusting the other person, communicating and being true to yourself is like what's going to make the dating experience the most successful. Whatever you choose to do, if you're going to have sex, protect yourself. If you don't want to have sex, find someone who respects that. It goes back to communication. It just brings it all together, you know? 100% communication is key. Be gentle on yourself while dating, I think. Because I think it can lead to a lot of like crappy feelings and like that really sucks. Anyway, on that note, I feel like I might be an absolute disaster in the dating world. I'm such an oversharer. I'm an awful liar. I just feel like I would overthink everything. Me too. All the time. I already overthink everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe we'd get used to it. I don't know. Kudos to everyone that like successfully navigates the dating world whatever way that you choose to because like oh I would just be like a fish out of water I feel oh me too and I talk I really do talk about this all the time I'm like I'm so glad no offense to people dating obviously there's a lot of you out there but I'm glad that I that I'm not in it right now I don't have the energy for dating I'm very happy where I am I don't I would be able to navigate it I just feel like this is too much I'm exhausted like I don't know how to like tell who to talk to a hundred percent I would feel exhausted for sure I think I would have fun at first yeah and enjoy it in some ways not by no means am I interested in doing it don't get it twisted (laughs) don't send my (laughs) husband a message after this episode Kelly wants to start dating (laughs) (laughs) yeah I feel like all ways of dating should just be like accepted for what they are you want a polygamous relationship do you you want a monogamous relationship? Do you? Just find the people that are like just into the same things. As yeah, you exactly. Are. Don't try to change people. It's the best you can do. Respect and communicate. Just these common themes that keep popping up <laughs> is just so enjoyable to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, wow, it all comes together. It's Aww. crazy. <laughs> well, let's talk about our therapy for the week. Okay. I had a hard time deciding what to pick for this week so did I Brittany oh did you I I truly did I wonder if we have the same therapy for the week Ooh, okay go I don't know um mine is actually just the podcast and talking to you and our guests and like it makes you realize things like as you talk to other people and you get other people's perspectives on things It's so nice, especially in this time where, you know, we can't see each other in person. It feels so good to still be able to connect and just talk and have no judgments in what we're talking about. It's been just very nice to be able to connect still and do something that we both enjoy. I love it. I totally agree. Wasn't my therapy for the week, but has definitely been therapeutic for sure just hearing other people's stories and like we have had a few people write in that we haven't gotten to yet and seeing the support I think is a huge one like all of our friends are so awesome and like sharing our stories and people wanting to be on the podcast share their stories and I just feel like it gives people the opportunity to express themselves that is exactly I don't care if we reach like five people and 
one person took something out of it or we reach thousands and you know even more people like the goal is to just like originally I think was just for ourselves really yeah to like chat and now it's kind of becoming like more and I just love that like that is so awesome mine is I also had a hard time I was just like like for the last couple days I've just been like oh my god I just feel like I'm doing nothing Uh, and obviously like not seeing my friends so I was just like finding uh, finding it hard to be like what am I even thankful for right now (laughs) yeah this piece of bread I don't know just kidding I'm not eating bread right now (laughs) so I was just having a day but then I just realized like I thought back on all the therapies that I've talked about on the last few podcasts and I'm like honestly I'm just finding therapy in situations that I normally wouldn't before my therapy now is like appreciating things that came very easy or that didn't seem significant before that just are like super significant now like I have a great relationship like obviously I've always appreciated that but if I was you know going out and doing things and I went to Kelowna to go skiing Like, that would have been my therapy, whereas now I can say, no, my therapy was just, like, connecting more to Spencer or, like, going for a walk and just being, like, wow, outside is beautiful. Yeah, like, the normal things that you wouldn't normally spend a lot of time, like, thinking about, I guess, because you're, like, oh, these things happen every day. Yeah. But that's really nice to be able to kind of step back and look at the things that you're able to do and have every day. Those things are becoming way more fulfilling and it's really nice. It's things that all of us should probably start to appreciate more now that it's kind of the only things that we have to do at the moment. We're alive. So that is like the best place to be. On that note, we will say goodbye for this episode. Good luck to all of you navigating the dating world we hope you gave we gave you even a teensy bit of help today or just entertainment or just <laughs> yeah we could have <laughs> yeah sorry about that uh if we didn't give you anything today <laughs> yeah so today we will say farewell in the african language so until next time totsies